Hello. In this video, we will discuss how to calculate the area of a polar graph. We will apply the partition and sum process we've used many times to calculate the areas of regions of polar graphs. As before, we'll begin with a basic geometric concept, and that concept is that the area of a sector of a circle is calculated by taking the fraction of area of the circle formed by the sector. So for example, if I have a sector of a circle where the angle, the central angle, has measure theta, we get the area of a sector by saying what fraction of the circle. So we see the area of a circle is pi r squared. Theta over 2 pi tells us what fraction of the circle that we have. And simplifying, we get 1 half r squared theta. Now, let's see how that idea can be used in this partition and sum process. Consider a region bounded by rays theta equals alpha and theta equals beta, and the curve r equals f of theta. We first partition the interval from alpha to beta with angles theta sub 0, theta 1, theta 2, up to 3, theta n. These angles form rays extending from the origin to partition the region into sector-like pieces. The measure of an angle between two consecutive rays, when we are considering measuring those angles counterclockwise, is delta theta sub k where delta theta sub k is theta sub k minus theta sub k minus 1. The kth sector-like piece has area delta a sub k and sits between rays theta sub k minus 1 and theta sub k. Now, this area that we originally had, which is bounded by the rays alpha to theta equals beta, we say that this area is the sum of the areas of those pieces, delta a sub k. We evaluate r sub k at f of theta sub k to calculate the radius of this almost sector-like piece at the partition angle theta sub k. So we see that here, if here is theta equals theta sub k, we're going to evaluate r at theta sub k, which gives us that point. We're going to use that to get this sector-like piece to approximate the area of delta a sub k. So delta a sub k will be approximately 1 half r sub k squared times delta theta sub k. And we can sum those approximate sector-like areas to approximate the area of the region A. As before, we take the limit as the norm of the partition goes to 0, and this develops the integral from alpha to beta of 1 half f of theta squared d theta. Let's find the area of the region inside the curve r equals f of theta, which is the sine squared of theta, and outside the circle r equals 3 fourths. First, let's graph the curves. As before, we'll check for symmetry in the graph of r equals sine squared of theta. We'll first check for symmetry about the x-axis. Suppose we have the point r theta on our graph, so that means that r is equal to sine squared of theta. Because sine is an odd function, we can say that the sine squared of negative theta is equal to the square of sine of negative theta, which gives us sine squared of theta, which is our r. Therefore, when r theta is on the graph, r negative theta is also on the graph, and so we know that the graph is symmetric about the x-axis. Let's check for symmetry about the y-axis. Again, if the point r theta is on the graph, then we know that r is equal to sine squared of theta. To check for symmetry about the y-axis, we can evaluate our function at pi minus theta. And in doing so, we see that when we simplify the sine of pi minus theta, sine of pi is 0, cosine of pi is negative 1. And so the sine of pi minus theta quantity squared is simply sine squared of theta, again, giving us our original r back. So we know that the graph is also symmetric about the y-axis. With symmetry about both the x and the y-axis, we know that the graph is also symmetric about the origin. Now, let's graph the function r equals sine squared of theta in the Cartesian plane, where theta is on the horizontal axis and r is on the vertical axis. This will give us more information about the polar graph. We see that when theta is 0, the radius is 0. And as we see that theta increases from 0 to pi over 2, the radius increases to 1. This tells us that on the polar graph, we see this same idea. We start at the origin, 
and the radius increases to 1 as theta increases to pi over 2. We then apply information about our symmetry, noting that the graph is symmetric about the y-axis. So therefore, we can reflect that blue piece of the curve across the y-axis to get the other half of the loop. And this matches what we see in the Cartesian graph of r equals sine squared of theta, as we see that the radius decreases from 1 down to 0 when theta is between pi over 2 and pi. We then apply symmetry about the x-axis, seeing that loop reflect over the x-axis to get the remaining piece of the graph of r equals sine from pi to 2 pi. When we now graph r equals 3 fourths, which is a circle of radius 3 fourths centered at the origin, we can see the region we want, the region inside the graph of r equals sine squared of theta and outside the circle. We'll take advantage of symmetry to see that it's sufficient to calculate the area inside r equals sine squared of theta and outside r equals 3 fourths in the first quadrant only and then multiply that quantity by 4. So we're looking at this, the area of this region right here. So next, we need to find the point of intersection of the two curves in the first quadrant. So we want to find that point. To find the point of intersection, we set the two equations equal and solve for theta. So sine squared of theta equals 3 fourths, which means sine of theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. Sine of theta equals positive square root of 3 over 2 when theta is equal to pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. Sine of theta is equal to negative square root of 3 over 2 when theta is equal to 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Recall, however, we're only focusing on the point of intersection in the first quadrant, which means we only need theta is equal to pi over 3. So we will focus on calculating the area inside r sine squared of theta outside r equals 3 fourths on the interval uh, where theta is between pi over 3 and pi over 2. We partition the interval from pi over 3 to pi over 2 and consider the area of a approximate sector whose radius is given by r sub k equals sine squared of th theta sub k, which we'll call that outer radius. We can see that here. So here's the sector, the near-like sector, uh, using that radius. And I could fill that in. That's the area we want. We then will come back and subtract the area of the sector having radius 3 fourths. So we'll come in and we'll remove this part where the radius here is r sub i sub k, which we can call an inner radius. So we get that the area is the sum of those sector-like pieces, k going from 1 to n, where the area of that sector-like piece is approximately 1 half the square of sine squared of theta sub k minus the square of 3 fourths times delta theta sub k. Again, taking the limit as the norm of the partition goes to 0, we pass to the integral from pi over 3 to pi over 2 of 1 half times the square of sine squared of theta minus the square of 3 fourths d theta. We'll use the half angle formula to replace sine squared of theta with 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over 2, which gets squared. When we expand that, we again see the square of a trig function, cosine squared of 2 theta in this case. So we will apply the half angle formula again. So we have 1 half times the integral of pi over 3 to pi over 2 of 1 fourth times the quantity 1 minus 2 cosine 2 theta plus 1 plus cosine of 4 theta over 2 minus 9 sixteenths d theta. We can now simplify and integrate and evaluate at our endpoints to get 9 times the square root of 3 minus 2 pi all over 128. Now when we look back and think about what value this gives us, this is simply the area in the first quadrant that's inside r equals sine squared of theta, but outside the circle r equals 3 fourths. So to get the full area that we want, we'll multiply by 4 to give us that the area of the region is 9 times the square root of 3 minus 2 pi all over 32. And again, that gives us this region here plus that region. Let's review the main ideas. 
The area of a region on a polar graph is calculated by summing areas of sector-like pieces, where the area of a sector of a circle is given by 1 half r squared theta, where theta is the angle between the two rays bounding the sector. This leads to the formula for the area of a region of a polar graph, namely the area equals 1 half times the integral from alpha to beta of r squared d theta. Finally, we rely on our knowledge of polar graphing and symmetry to graph and set up our integral.